Record Store Day 2023 round one just happened and I went a little crazy. Let's see what I got and what I didn't, or maybe I did. Let's talk about that. There are two Record Store Days per year. At least there are two major ones. And the first one just happened in April. The second one comes up on Black Friday. So if you're curious about what you might hear about another Record Store Day down the line, that's why that happens. I actually wasn't aware of that before. I was out at two different record stores this weekend trying to find all of the different pieces of vinyl that I was looking for on the list. I actually only had two pieces of vinyl on the list that I was looking for and ended up with getting a lot more. So as I said, I went out to two record stores on Record Store Day and I was actually out in Burr Win, Pennsylvania for the first shop, which was a place called Shady Dog Records. The crowd there was really cool, not a huge crowd in line, which is one of the reasons why I went to a smaller store to begin with, because I was only really looking for these two pieces and I knew they would have them. I called them up for them. Shady Dog is a cool little record shop, probably no bigger than like a 20 by 20 little square with uh, like a mini second floor that has some extra CDs and stuff like that. I've never actually gone out to record store day on the day of to experience all the madness and try to grab all the stuff and everything. So I wanted to just see it, especially on a day where the Taylor Swifties were out too. I was actually really happy to see all the Swifties out there. And I really like the fact that Taylor Swift's releasing these records on record store day and even pumping up the crowds even more and getting more people to these record stores. I think it's great. And I saw a mom and her daughter out there in line and they were out there waiting forever. And I just thought it was a great experience for them and a great experience for all of us to be waiting in line for music, which is exactly what people used to do. And it's exactly what we should be doing. We should be waiting in line for music, not for iPhones or shoes and other junk like that. Although I do like iPhones and shoes. Anyway. They had all the records in just brown cardboard boxes and just let everybody just go at it as we got in there. And it was really nice. Most of us were actually all in there for different things. So we heard people calling out different things. I was calling out the records I was looking for. People were just handing them over to each other. It was a very cool vibe. Everyone was really chill and very nice to each other. I actually met a really nice guy who was talking to me about a lot of punk records. He inspired me to get a record from there. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. The owner is a very nice guy and he actually granted me permission to do an interview in the future. There's actually two owners. So it's their 30th anniversary as well, which is another reason why I wanted to go there. So there's gonna be a future interview coming from Shady Dog Records. So definitely check that on the channel. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss that. The first piece of vinyl that I went out to go get, they actually got my lazy butt out of bed to go get this year for Record Store Day was Brown Out Presents Brown Sabbath. Now, I'm not sure if you know what this is or if you've ever heard this before, but if you like Black Sabbath, and if you like any type of almost Afrobeat, Latin funk type stuff, you will love this. This one comes on a brown splatter vinyl. This originally came out in 2014 from Ubiquity Records, and then I think they repressed it again in 2016. It's got an amazing gatefold with an awesome sheen cover on this jacket. This is a really, really nice gatefold. This is from Ubiquity Records, which is a really good funk label out of LA. So if you ever find any stuff from Ubiquity, definitely go check them out. Definitely check out Brown Sabbath if you're into any kind of horn-driven stuff and you like Black Sabbath. Really, really cool, awesome record store day pickup. Next, I picked up Studio One Ska. This is a fantastic collection of ska and early reggae stuff from Studio One, which is an awesome label from Jamaica in the 60s. I believe the original came out in 2013. I think this is the 10th anniversary, or it might be the 20th anniversary. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it's the 10th anniversary. This comes on the translucent green vinyl. The original was on regular black vinyl, so it's really cool to have these on translucent green. All of the repressings that Soul Jazz Records is doing for these Studio One Presents are all in different colors. This is a great way to get yourself into reggae. I basically have taught myself everything I know about reggae from these compilations. I go out and get these compilations, listen to them, read about them. The liner notes in here are really good. They always supply a lot of great stories in the liner notes about all these. Most of these are from rare 45s that are extremely expensive to get. This does say that it was limited to to, I believe 1700 copies. It's probably gonna be available out there, but I would definitely
definitely scoop it up while you can. It was at this point where I basically had gotten everything that I wanted to get and I just wanted to really observe everybody else and I'm starting to see some other records that people were just passing over that I had seen other people talk about. So the first one of those was this one from The Temptations, All Directions to Repressing. This came out originally in 1972. I haven't had a chance to really listen to all of these records yet and this is one that I haven't gotten much into. So I've not had a chance to listen to this one yet on vinyl, but I have heard this album before and I know it's really good and I'm glad that I now have it in my collection. At this point, Record Store Day is starting to very much set in and I see this, Willie Henderson and the Soul Explosions. I saw like four of them, man, and people are just flipping by them and not picking them up. And you look at an album like this and you're like, this has to be good. It comes on this awesome orange transparent vinyl and this is from Brunswick Records. This originally came out in 1970 and it is a repressing from the original master tapes. So that's pretty cool. The jacket itself is really nice and it looks like it's a tip on jacket. This is a repress from ORG Music. So if you find this out there, go check it out. I'm sure it's awesome. It's 1970 Funky Chicken, Willie Henderson, and the Soul Explosions. It's probably real sick. So one of the beauties about Record Store Day is that you meet other people. And I met this guy who was talking to me about punk rock records and he recommended that I get this. Now I recommended that he get the Soul Jazz Records Studio One Ska and he recommended that I get this New York Noise. Now again, I have not listened to this yet. This comes on yellow transparent vinyl, but this is a really, really sick looking cover. And I know that all the compilations from Soul Jazz Records are really good. I have sampled some of their other punk rock ones. And this one is dance music from the New York underground from 1977 to 1982. This is on limited edition yellow vinyl. It's a new 2023 edition. So this might be a repress similar to how the Studio One Ska was a repress. Features classic New York post-punk, post-funk, and no wave tracks. This comes on a heavyweight double album and it also has a free download code and it comes with complete inner notes that are really awesome, just like all the other ones from the Soul Jazz Records, as you can see here. So if you get a chance, definitely check this out. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm very, very excited to listen to this. Okay, so if we're keeping count here at this point, I've already bought three more records than I had already planned on getting for Record Store Day. And at this point, I put those down and I really wanted to just talk to the owner, experience the store a little bit, check out some things. And the next thing you know, I turned around and saw this. The Song Remains the Same is the first Led Zeppelin album that I wore out to death when I was a kid. I bought it on tape and I actually still have the tape and it's very, very worn out at this point. It sounds like crap, but I absolutely love this album. This is the deluxe box set that they released and this is pressed by RTI Records on 180 gram vinyl and it is an extremely good mastering of this album. This was a surprise. Very, very glad that I got it. I'm super excited about it and I will share more of it with you in a future video. So that was wrapping up everything at Shady Dog Records. And like I said, this place was really awesome. I plan on doing an entire interview with them and showcasing the store a little bit more for their 30th anniversary. So definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Now, it was off to Westchester, Pennsylvania to go to Hop Fidelity. This place, they have an agreement with a local brewery called Tired Hands and they're able to serve beer on premises but it's not like a huge thing. It's basically the way I look at it is I could bring my wife in there and she can go drink a beer while I'm going to look at some records. So it's a very awesome establishment. So if you're in Westchester, definitely check it out. Byron, the owner, is a really nice guy and he had a really awesome record store day. Uh, best one so far. Yeah, we opened three years ago, so this is by far the best one. Biggest line, you know, done the best business. A lot, a lot of people off of the Taylor Swift, of course. Yeah, there was a few titles that just had really low runs that did really well, like the Macho Man, everybody looking for that. I, I ended up with one copy. So there was a guy here at three in the morning waiting in line for that one. The 1975 was another one everybody was looking for that we didn't get a lot of, but I think it was a pretty small run. Uh, the Billy Joel sold really well, The Grateful Dead. We had 20 copies of the box set and we sold through all of those. But yeah, it's been a great day. I actually got to talk to him for a little bit and he's really awesome. So I have an entire interview 
interview that we're going to be doing with them in the future as well. So that's two interviews that are going to be coming out for the channel for these record stores. So a lot of great stuff happening on Record Store Day here. I really wasn't even looking to get any other Record Store Day releases at this store. I was going to probably just get some other used records and just check out the day here until I started talking to Byron. He started suggesting some things to me that were not originally on my radar. And the first one was this Flash and the Dynamics, the New York sound. And this is some awesome Latin funk, psych rock stuff. It is on purple splatterish vinyl. It's more of a transparent swirl purple vinyl, but it looks beautiful. Now, apparently this was supposed to come out for Record Store Day in 2021, but it got delayed. Now, I'm really glad they did delay it because everything about this is very premium. This is from Craft Recordings, an all analog master cut by Kevin Gray, and it sounds fantastic. And the jacket is really, really nice, really premium. It's a tip on jacket here. I'm so thankful for Byron to suggest this to me because I totally would have missed out on it. And then I got home and I started like looking around on the internet and apparently a lot of people were really trying to find this. So I was very, very psyched about this. Definitely check this one out if you can. So after having a Latin Brazilian funk thing in my hand already, I turned around to see this, bam, here it is, a collection of Brazilian 45s from the Mr. Bongo label. This record right here is also from the Mr. Bongo label, Waltel Bronco that I'm gonna talk about in a future video. Mr. Bongo has got some really awesome, rare stuff of all kinds, and he teamed up here with Mike D to come out with this set of 45s. Now these are really, really cool. This is a very, very sick, premium box set. The cover for this thing is really nice. I actually like the way that it opens, which it opens like that. Some of the other 45 ones that I have are not that way. Mike D of the Beastie Boys digs deep into Brazil's rich musical tapestry, selecting funky, psych rock, dreamy MPB and experimental nuggets. Five unique 45s in a limited edition BRZ45 box. I really like box sets like this. These ones have some pretty sick little labels here that as you can see, along with real sick sleeves for each of these with the Mr. Bongo label. These are really sick. I haven't had a chance to listen to all of these yet, but when I do, I will definitely make a full video about this. At this point, I was done, at least I thought, with my record store day releases. And I just went around looking more for some used records. When you're out at record store day, you don't wanna always just get all the stuff that's out there for record store day. There's a lot of really great records out there. So we got another Brunswick album here. This one is Jackie Wilson. Now this is an original Brunswick records as opposed to the funky chicken from Willie Henderson that I got earlier. Dorothy Ashby in a minor groove, Billy Ward and the Dominoes, Mr. Personality from Lloyd Price, Shout from the Vibrations. So now I wanna talk a little bit about the rest of my experience for the day because this really gets me down the rabbit hole and some experiences of Record Store Day online after the fact. I started talking to Byron, the owner of Hop Fidelity, about some other records. He specifically mentioned the Roy Ayers Stone Soul Picnic, which I had in my hands at Bryn Mawr Shady Dog Records and put down. So I immediately went online and tried to get it. And then he also mentioned Black Renaissance, which is coming out from Love and Hate Records. I know that label and I like soul jazz stuff. So I already know that I'm gonna like the record, but the fact that it's already rare and sought after, it's like, man, how did I miss that? As well as somebody just walked into the store and got their copy of the Charlie Parker Cubop Afro recordings, the live Charlie Parker Cubop Afro recordings. So I went online to try to go get these three records. At this point, somewhere along the lines, I found out, and I'm a dope, I'm a moron, and I really need to check my record store day lists a lot better in the future because I was not aware that Medeski, Martin, and Wood were putting out the 30th anniversary of their second album, It's a Jungle in here, on Clearwater Blue Vinyl, limited edition. This would have been the number one thing on my list. It would have maybe have even changed which store I went to. I sifted through all the records that were at Sh Shady Dog Records, unless they only had one or two copies and somebody got it in the very first people that were in there, I did not see this record. I did not see it on the list, and I thought that I looked over that list 25 times before Record Store Day came, but I did not know that Medeski Martin and Wood was actually pressing this record for the first time on vinyl and putting it out for Record Store Day 2023. So I immediately went online to try to find it, and pretty much every single place at this point was sold out. Of 
course, because it's a fantastic record. Why wouldn't it be sold out? I'm shocked that nobody was even talking about this record on videos. I watched so many videos of people talking about stuff. I heard Duran Duran so many times on Record Store Day. I heard people talking about the Billy Joel and I heard people talking about all this stuff. I didn't hear one person mention Medeski Martin and Wood. And I'm sorry, but in my opinion, that's more important to have than all of these records. And again, that's the beauty of Record Store Day. Some people want some things, other people want other things. I really wanted this Medeski Martin and Wood at this point on Sunday afternoon, well after Record Store Day when everybody's already making their reviews on it on Discogs. I go on to Discogs and already the scalpers have it for out there for over $100. Some of these record stores are overwhelmed with their business on Saturdays. Some of them are taking orders online on Saturdays. Some of them don't start taking orders online until Sunday, but either way, they might tell you that a record is available and then it's actually not available. So I was experiencing this very much where I was trying to find this Modesky Martin and Wood. I'm adding it to carts at places. It was originally saying it was available, then it wasn't. Or places were saying that they weren't available until, you know, seven o'clock Pacific time or central time as the time zones went along. And every time I would go to a new place, nobody had it. Luckily, I was able to get myself a copy, but my friend was going through this similar situation with the Scott Wildland record. He added it to a cart and then as he was checking out, it went away from his cart. He hit refresh and it came back into his cart and he went and checked out and it checked out and he got a confirmation number and I'm like, well, you better go buy it from somewhere else because you don't know if you have a confirmation number or not. That record's already going for almost $200 on Discogs. So Record Store Day was definitely a success for me. I hope it was for you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you got. I want to get some conversations started and hear all about what everybody was getting. I'm really excited about hearing about all this stuff because I think it's great that we all have different tastes coming in on these days and trying to find all this different stuff. Even if you just went to a record store and bought some used stuff on Saturday or Sunday, definitely let me know in the comments. Definitely subscribe while you're there. I have said enough. I'm going to go listen to this Brown Sabbath and chill. I will see you guys on the next one.